Uh, something came to my uh, attention the other day mm-hmm. when I was reading Rock, Paper, Shotgun, and an article showed up for Steam Link. Mm-hmm. Now, you and I both use Steam. There's a lot of Steam users out there. And they've been playing with streaming, kind of leaking for quite a long time. But the interesting thing that they showed about this was that they're showing, they were talking about using Steam Link on your phone. Now, this has been in talks, but I didn't realize that it was already up and available for use. So I've been kind of toying with it, and I wanted to show you, like, what it's like to be able to stream from your Steam library, like, Mm -hmm. any game you want onto your phone. Okay. So I have it kind of already pulled up here. What you really need to download is an app called Steam Link. It's available for iOS and for Android. Awesome. So, because I am an iOS user. Oh, yeah. That's right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, basically, you first have to do some customizations, which I've already done here. It automatically recognizes the desktop. I'm going to use a touch controller, though you can, if you have like a Bluetooth, you can pair the controller. Uh, it shows I have a good connection. And literally, once you have everything set up, It's going to start connecting, and it's going to reach to my computer. Now, your computer does have to be on. Okay. So, and literally right now, what you'll see on your actual desktop of your machine is basically what's shown on the screen here. It'll boot directly into uh, what this is called, the the couch or the the big TV uh, uh, app for. Yeah, yeah. So I can kind of control everything here, either by like with the, the D-pad here, or if I have a mouse, you can also access the mouse to be able to, you know, control things nice. and kind of see fit. So it's basically remote desktop for Steam. Pretty much. Yeah. So I can just select a game here. If I want to, uh, let's say I want to check out, well, not the, not Killing for I want to install that. So I want to play the messenger, right? Mm-hmm. So right now I'm using the D-pad interface that's on here to select everything. So I would just select that. And just like the Steam couch thing, press A, press A to play. And immediately starts launching your game and I can just start playing it right here on my phone. Nice. So and everything is based off of your Wi-Fi connection. You can't really do anything with mobile data or anything like that. Yeah. So it does get a little weird, but it'll hold. A, oh wow! It'll it's... hold everything right up here. So, so I have my start, start and you select. start select and everything. So I can just start. Ooh. And we'll say I'm I am using the uh, Galaxy Note uh, Note Eight for this. So it is a little bit of a bigger phone, and depending on your connection with your phone to the Wi-Fi, you might have a little bit of latency, but you kind of see them. Oh, wow. Playing it pretty well. Now, some some games are not going to... They're not translate over well. You might yeah, get a lag. Exactly. It's all based on your connection as usual. But this is actually pretty badass. Yeah, it is pretty dope. But yeah, yeah, some losing, a drop there. So I'm losing connection to the I'm Wi-Fi. not sure exactly why. It's either something with my Wi-Fi, but I gotta take a look at that. But yeah. yeah. So but I mean when it works, I mean it works pretty well. Like you can really kinda do some stuff. So I'm not I'm not a fan of the actual touch controller that's you know located on here. Mm-hmm. But I mean if you're in your house in one room and you wanna play something, your girlfriend uh, is using the computer or yeah, something headphones. Like that. You yeah, use headphones, you get your thing. But you could also use the uh, mobile controller adapters that you can plug into your phone, because iOS has it, and I know that you know, Android has them as well. Exactly. So you'll be able to plug in and, you know, play wherever you're sitting. Exactly. And, and that's, that's pretty badass. It's pretty dope. And, like, uh, when I first used it, I tried uh, using, like, uh, Final Fantasy XIII mm-hmm. to see how that would run runs perfect because you're literally streaming the video from your computer to there so anything yeah. that your computer can run it'll show up right here and you're, and you're basically just remotely controlling it so Ex- exactly yeah. so uh you do have a lot of different options like you can use a touch controller um 
You can turn that off. You can use a trackpad, trackpad cursor, direct cursor. You can disable the mouse. You could also layer out the uh, the layout itself. You can kind of control where everything is. So if I had to do like layout controls, it'll show it just like a regular kind of controller that you would set up for your screen. Now, gotcha. Now, if you, I had a bigger device like a like an iPad or one of the Android pads, I'd probably be able to customize a bit more. But with your cell phone, you only have so much space to do that. Okay. So. But I mean, for for something like this, and I'm you know streaming it from my pl for your place all the way to my place yeah. in the same building, but and there's a little bit lag here and there, but I mean it still works pretty well. Controller configuration required. <laughs> so, and this is Destiny Two, which I just downloaded today. So I'm literally running this for the first time. We'll see exactly what happens. Since uh, everything's been upgraded from Bungie over to Steam, yeah, or uh, not Bungie, uh, Activision, uh, BattleNet over to this. So, um, who do they go with again? Are they... um, Destiny is self-publishing now. Oh, so they're so they're doing the whole indie route yeah. almost. So they're doing the whole indie route. So, wow, I mean, this is playing. So buttery smooth for the most part minus the the little delay I'm having with my Wi-Fi and some reason I'm having some kind of issue I'm gonna have to like look into that but correct yeah so but well looks like this one doesn't really doesn't really want to yeah oh, there it goes oh there it goes broad save ready um where that's not really picking up like the controller so there are some kinks any that need to be worked out. Uh, did you find that you had this issue when you were next to it upstairs? Did you test it out? No, it's a, it was a it was a lot easier to kind of deal with. So, like this is, I think you know, deal with the latency that we get here, and you know, kind of get a little disconnect. But I mean, it's it's a start in the right place to show streaming gaming from like your desktop over to your you know computer. I mean, this this is. We're going in a very interesting direction of what PC and streaming technology can do nowadays. Yeah. So, and the funny thing is, is that since they're doing this, I kind of see where this is also coming from because um, the other services that that have been that popped up, like Google Stadia, and you had Shadow, and you have I think Nvidia has a service as well. Um, you know, that they, they're basically wanting to keep Steam and themselves wanting to basically keep these things to the Steam environment, which makes sense because if you already have a system that you built, you have your living room gaming PC or you know, you're just your main rig, you're gonna wanna, you know, be able to play it, not necessarily have to pay a service fee or anything to just play it wherever you are. So that that makes sense. Well, the benefit of also having some of those services is the fact that even though you aren't if you don't have that kind of setup and you still want to play your games, you can also do the same thing, but you can do it pretty much anywhere. There yeah. are some limitations that I can see with the, this implementation, but for the most part, it's it's a good replacement one for the Steam Link that, that they used to have the actual physical device. Um, I haven't heard any good things with that from, you know, after it was launched. Uh, actually, a friend of ours, of Larry, basically uh, tried using it not too long ago. I was just messing around with it, and it caused a lot of issues. So um, one of the many reasons why they probably abandoned it. Uh, but this is pretty pretty awesome. Yeah. It's, okay. it's... I want to try it out myself on my iPad because of uh, the, what, the... Um, 10 inch, 10.5 inch iPad. Yeah. So I'm going to try on that. Yeah, I think like using your iPad, if you have like one of those pads compared to a cell phone, is definitely going to work a lot better in that regard compared yeah. to me using my little cell phone. But I mean, the idea for the technology for streaming is really interesting and to see how well it works kind of connecting given you know you, you have latency here it's all dependent on your network connection how strong it is mm -hmm. but i mean it's a step in the right direction we can kind of see how google stadia is kind of going with their stuff which is supposed to be i think launching also kind of soon but i mean we're gaming is going in a very different direction and it's 
it's interesting to see that yeah. you're getting the change. So. It's the mobile, focusing on mobile, and, and, and people are trying to bring games wherever they go just to, if there's like some downtime and things, just to keep them preoccupied. But yeah. So I haven't tried to, I haven't tried to leave my machine on, and then if I get a break at work, trying to connect it at work since, you know, kind of a pretty good little. Why do I work at work? Yeah. So, but would I ever do that? No. Don't <laughs> fuck around at work. It's yeah. your job. It's what pays the bills. So just we'll make sure time. if you're going to play games, do it while you're shitting. <laughs> Hopefully you get a good connection in the can. <laughs> well, the other thing I wanted to also ask, uh, you don't have to make any connect. Well, I guess maybe for most people, but um, you didn't do any con configurations on your firewall or anything like that. No, you no, just no set it up. Uh, I believe that you do have to go into your Steam profile and allow uh, remote connections in the first place. Mm -hmm. uh, and the Steam link will tell you that it will give you steps exactly how to set up your PC for remote play. So once you do all that first, you're basically good to go and then you just do a quick test to see what your signal is it'll give you like a good or a bad you know if you get a bad signal it's probably not going to work uh but if you're good on everything else you're pretty much good ready to play and stream steam games on your phones or tablet devices so yeah, interesting uh now there's a there's another side of me the the uh evil hacker inside um there there's a thing that i, I Listening to all of this and, and looking at it, so it, it basically mimics remote desktop. So it's yeah. as if like within Windows and other, some uh, versions of, well, Windows and, I don't think Mac has it, but mostly Windows is known for remote. There are applications that you can use, like uh, go to my PC and stuff like that, different remote types of applications, even TeamViewer. It allows you to just remote from a different location into your machine and you're, it's as if you're sitting in front of your machine, just like with the Steam Link app. Um, pretty much the Steam Link app is doing at that point is you're getting a remote view of the of the application, the Steam application on your desktop um, at the same time, but giving you the ability to also provide inputs just as if you were to use remote desktop or any other remote based tool, you could use your keyboard and mouse. So there is similarity. So my thing is, is that as to what the security level is with the application, in regards to the remote capabilities and the security of it. So there's probably going to be some end things that I'm going to keep a close eye on in regards to that. So this is going to be interesting since this thing just dropped. So I will also say from that security standpoint is for anybody using it, just use it sparingly and be very careful and not to always leave it on. It's, it's something to, to play with, test it out, but always just kind of keep, keep that in the back of your head. Don't be tinfoil hatty, but at the same time, these things are new they need to be tested and most likely a patch will probably be coming soon i guarantee it yeah because you're gonna force them into it you're gonna be hacking the shit while you're well, playing if it. i don't do it Ooh, somebody i will. figured this out hey steve okay i can hack into your shit <laughs> no but, but i'm pretty sure that, you know i would not be surprised if you found like a, a security loophole like that and be able to jog it in and let gabe uh, Gabe and Steam and all that, you know, <laughs> probably get a fucking job, dude. Well, they have things called bug bounties, so you can actually do it, yep. and then if they, if once they find it as a valid bug, hopefully if they do, there's there's things behind that, but I won't get into it. Um, but if they find it as a valid finding um, and you report it, they usually do report, they reward the person that discovered it, so... But it, aside from like, yeah, this thing is it's really cool tech at the same time. There's certain concerns that you have to keep in mind. But at the same time, it's good to play with, test it out and, and you know, yeah. able to get your and, games on the on the on the move. Yeah. And interesting to, to see where Steam's going with the streaming technology and kind of technology altogether. So yeah. good job, Steam. Good job, buddies. Good job. Keep it up. Let's go play. Let's go, let's go, let's go play. <laughs>